Hello everyone, welcome back to Science by Asha Matpal. In today's session, I will be starting with class 8 science and I will be taking up the first chapter crop production and management. So let's begin today's session. The chapter crop production and management, it is the first chapter of class 8 biology. And before starting this chapter, let us first discuss some previous points that you must have learned in class 6th and 7th. Now, as we know from our previous knowledge that plants are autotrophs, right? Because they can make food by the process of photosynthesis. On the other hand, animals including humans are heterotrophs. That is, we cannot make our own food. Now, but all the kind of organisms like animals any kind of animal if you see or the humans we all need food okay why we need food we need food for energy and what we do with this energy we do various kinds of activities not only the physical activities which we see but inside our body also there are a lot of activities which are done using this energy like for example respiration digestion excretion etc so for all kind of activities basically we need energy and this energy we get from the food now if you see humans humans get their major food requirement from the plants and as well as from the animals right these are the major source of our food and if you talk about the plant we say it as crop so in the beginning when the humans were not knowing how to do agriculture during that point of time humans usually used to hunt the animals and they used to eat raw fruits and vegetables but but with time they have learned the technique of growing plants that is the agriculture okay so they have learned the technique of agriculture and later on they learned that how to grow crops and the importance of the various kinds of the crop so now let's begin the chapter so what is a crop crop is basically when plant of the same kind are cultivated at one place on a large scale now plant of the same kind for example suppose you want to grow wheat so you will take land okay a very big size of land uh, say about in hectares so in the hectares of the land when you are growing wheat only then that will be called as a wheat crop not a single plant is called as a crop remember okay crop is what when plants of the same kind so here the same kind example i'm giving wheat it can be rice or paddy it can be groundnut or it can be any any other fruit or vegetable are cultivated at one place that is on a very very big piece of land on a large scale it is called as a crop okay now the types of the crop varies basically and in india we see majorly two um, seasons like the one is the summer and the monsoon and then another one we see as a winter so on that basis in our country the crops are of two type the first type of crop is the kharif crop and another crop is called as the rabi crop kharif crops are the crops which um, need higher temperature and huge amount of water basically rabi crops are the crops which does not require very high temperature they grow well in the dry climate also so if you see the difference between the kharif and the rabi crop the crops which are sown in the rainy season are called as the kharif crops that is from june to september okay and their example is paddy maize paddy is what paddy is rice paddy maize soya bean groundnut cotton if you see rabi crops these crops are sown in the winter season and uh, their time varies from October to March. Example are wheat, gram, peas, pus, mustard, linseed, etc. Now, if you see between the crops, like uh, after the Kharif, we grow the Rabi crops. Now, from March to June, this time, this time, that is from between the month of March to June, we grow another kind of crop. Okay, they are called as Zad crops. 
they are called as zad crops now zad crops are grown only for a very short period of time so that is uh, that is um, what we can say from this information is this that these crops are very fast growing crops and they require dry high temperature for their growth okay example of zaid crop is very easy to write it is watermelon if you see right now in the market you must be seeing a lot of watermelon then we have musk melon cucumbers okay and then uh, we are also having the cluster beans gavar which we say usually in our own local language so these are the crops which are grown in between or after the uh, you can say harvesting of the rabi crops that is from the month of march to june from the month of march to june we grow short term crops like the watermelon crop musk melon cluster of beans cucumber okay they are called as a zaid crops and along with this sometimes we also see fodder fodder is what it is the chara for the animals basically so animal feeding crops also are grown okay they are also called as the zaid crops now let us move to the next part now before growing any kind of crop there are certain practices or there are certain number of practices which are taken up by the farmer during the crop pr production okay so these steps are also called as the activities basically okay these are called as the agricultural practices now these agricultural practices you need not to uh, remember or mug up just apply your common sense and you will be able to write them okay so what are agricultural practices these are basically the activities or the steps which are taken up by the farmer during the whole process of the crop production okay so see the farmer wants to grow a crop so where the farmer will grow the crop the first step will be obviously preparing the land that is the soil so the first step is preparation of soil so when the basic is made that is when the soil is ready to accept the uh, seeds then the second step will become sowing now after putting the seed in the soil what you do you give it water and food so that it can grow right so adding manure and fertilizer is what it is a kind of food for the proper growth and development of the plant and then irrigation is what watering so first of all we will have to prepare the land which is called as preparation of soil then once the soil is ready it is in the good state the farmer will start putting seeds now these seeds need food and water for their growth and development so the third and the fourth step will become adding manure and fertilizer and irrigation now once you are giving the sufficient water supply and sufficient manuring is done obviously the plant will start growing so once the plant will grow will start growing you need to protect them from insects and from other kind of wild plants so what we do we do protection from the weeds and from the insects now after this after some point of time the crop will become ready and then we do what harvesting that is cutting of the crop okay and then proper storage of the crop should be done that is crop production management and storage remember the crop will reach us after proper production that is the production crop production then its management and then its proper storage so after that it will reach to us or after the storage it is sent to the market basically now let us start with the first step that is the preparation of soil now in preparation of soil what is done see preparation of soil is the first step in the agricultural practices in this step 
the farmer uses plow or hoe plow or hoe are what they are a kind of agricultural tools okay what they have in common both plow and hoe they are having a sharp end on one side it is either made up of iron these days generally iron but uh, earlier it was made from the wood okay so they dig it inside the soil okay so this sharp end goes inside the soil and the plow and the hoe they are attached to some kind of the animal like the bull and as the bull moves forward okay so it keeps on moving inside that is this sharp end keeps on going inside the soil and it makes the soil upside down like this okay so the soil is turned and loosened so that is why the word is here the soil is turned and loosened using a plow and this process is called as tilling or plowing this process is called as tilling or plowing now why this step is important as you are seeing that the soil goes upside down in this step right so the loosened soil allows roots to penetrate deeply the roots which will come out from the seed they can go easily inside the soil then second they can easily go even further deep inside the soil they will get space for breathing and then the loosened soil will have sufficient amount of oxygen so it will help in the growth of the earthworms and the microbes now the movement of the earthworm when the earthworm will move inside the soil it will again make some layers of it upside down and even microbes microbes will eat upon the dead and decaying matter dead and decaying matter now this dead and decaying matter brings back the organic content into the soil it will bring back the organic content in the soil so in this way the loosening of the soil is also helpful in the proper growth of the earthworms and the microbes the earthworm movement will further loosen the soil and it will add a lot of humus in the soil microbes will help in breaking down the dead and the decomposed animal and in turn it will bring the organic content back into the soil okay so that is why here i have written in the last step that turning and loosening of the soil brings the nutrient rich soil to the top so that plant can use these nutrient so there will be a proper mixing of the nutrient between the various layers of the soil okay so this turning will help in taking the nutrients mixing and also it will help in the proper mixing of the humus the movement of the plow or the hoe they also helps in taking out the weed in some cases now before going further let us try to understand some agricultural tools here okay which are also called as a agricultural implement so this is the plow okay so it is basically used in the tilling purpose in removing weeds and adding fertilizers to the crop it is either made up of wood iron or both you can say it is drawn by a pair of bulls or the other animal that is this end this end is over to the body of the bull okay this is the sharp end here and this is the handle this is the plow shaft this whole rod is called as a plow shaft and this triangular end is called as a plow shear here okay so it is mentioned here it contains a strong triangular iron strip called as a plow shear it basically moves inside the soil and it helps in the loosening of the soil the main part is a long log of wood which is called as a plow shaft this one there is a handle at one end of the shaft this is the handle the other end is attached to a beam which is placed on the bull's neck so as the bull will move forward this sharp end will dig inside the soil and it will make the soil upside down or it will help in uh, loosening of the soil 
right then let us see the next agricultural tool this is hoe okay hoe is a modern kind of plow you can say basically and the function is same that it helps in the removal of weeds it helps in the loosening of the soil it has a long rod made up of wood or the iron this whole thing okay again there is a beam here okay then there's a strong bent plate here okay and it is also pulled by the animal so it is quite like the plow itself but it is more modernized and better mechanized you can say as compared to the um, plow then we are having the cultivators cultivators are uh, basically used for the plowing and they also saves labor and time okay basically nowadays the plowing is also done using the tractor so at the back of the tractor these cultivators are attached okay and they are having the sharp ends which goes inside the soil so as the tractor move further okay or move ahead what happens these end will go inside the soil and as the tractor is moving they also make the soil move upside down even sometimes there are multiple function which are achieved using the cultivator machines then next is a seed drill seed drills are always having a funnel shaped end here these are the funnel shaped end okay inside the funnel the seeds are kept the healthy seeds are kept inside this funnel and then it is attached to some animal okay basically and from this end there are various rods which uh, which goes and they keep on dropping the seeds on the soil this end will go into the soil it will loosen the soil okay as it will loosen the soil the seeds will keep on getting added at a certain distance inside the soil okay so it helps in sowing the seeds uniformly at the equal distance one seed will come here another will come here another will come here another will come here another one will come here so there will be a proper distance among the seeds and um, it also ensures that the seeds are covered uh, after the sowing so the birds cannot pick them up from the field so again it saves a lot of time and labor and it helps in the perfect placement of the seeds they are also attached sometimes uh, to the machines even then another one is a combine combine is the one which performs the function of the harvester as well as a thresher that is it helps in the cutting and it also helps in the threshing threshing means beating of cutted crops so that from their shaft or from their dry parts the grains come out okay so they are called as combine and they are also very uh, uh, very common nowadays okay they are attached to the tractors basically and these are the ends which helps in the cutting and the threshing that is first they cut the crop and then they move over to it and they thresh it that is they bring out the grain out from the dry shafts or from their dry coverings now the next agricultural practice is the sowing basically now sowing is a very important step after the preparation of soil why it is very much important because the first step is itself um, needs to be taken very carefully that is selection of the good quality clean and healthy seeds so for that what is done usually that farmer selects the healthy seeds okay and how they are selected what they can do is this that they can take the seeds in a large container which is filled with water filled with water now after the step they will leave the seeds in it leave the seeds in large container and after some time what we will observe is this that some seeds will float some seeds will float and other seeds will settle other seeds will settle 
at the bottom right now what is the difference between these two type of seed the seeds which are floating they are usually the unhealthy seeds okay how we can say that these are unhealthy seeds because these seeds are hollow inside they are eaten up by the insects and that is why they are hollow since they are hollow it means they are light in weight so if they are light in weight they will float and this will help in the in their identification as unhealthy seeds on the other hand if the center of the seed is is full that is it is completely filled it will make the seeds heavy since the seeds are heavy so it will sink at the bottom of the vessel or the big container and it will tell us that these are the healthy seeds and in this way farmer can select the healthy seeds so selection of the healthy clean and good quality seed is very much important so the tool which is used for sowing is a funnel shaped kind of tool as i have shown you the picture in the previous uh, slide that is they are generally called as the seed drill nowadays earlier there was simple funnel and then from this funnel a lot of pipes usually go down into the soil okay so the seeds are filled into the funnel and they are passed down through two or three pipes having the sharp ends these ends pierces into the soil and places seeds there these days seed drills are used okay now what are the precautions one should take while sowing the seeds while sowing the seeds the first step is the selection of healthy good quality and clean seeds okay this i have already explained to you here second they must be sown at appropriate depth that is at right depth from the top of the soil suppose this is the top of the soil now one can sow seed here also one can sow seed here also now see there is a difference if you sow the seed okay in great depth okay that is the distance between the seed and the top soil is very much then this kind of seed okay will not be able to produce the seed link why because the distance to reach to the top soil is very high okay so it will die here so this seed if you take this seed is very close to the top soil and if you will give water to the seed it will emerge or it will give out the seed link okay which can come out from the top soil and breathe the seeds must be covered after the sowing that is after the sowing they must be covered with the soil why because if you left them open then birds will pick them up right and then you won't be getting the seedlings appropriate distance is necessary to avoid overcrowding of the plant now from this step itself the question comes so i'll explain this to you see distance among the seed is very much important this is the first seed this is the second seed this is the third seed this is the fourth seed this is the fifth seed let us see now take another condition where you have to put the seeds very close to each other like this okay these are two different conditions here there is a proper distance among the seeds here no proper distance is there right now imagine a condition that you are sitting in your classroom suppose on a single desk four children are sitting then what will happen all the four children will have problem in opening their book in writing their copies right because they will not get the proper space and they will fight with each other right but if on a single bench single child is sitting then what will happen that child will get right amount of the space and there will be a peace of mind right or not in the same manner see the seeds here in the soil now if there is a perfect distance between the seeds what will happen suppose you are giving water okay and there is a sunlight here okay 
so every seed will get sufficient amount of sunlight sufficient sunlight they will get okay over every seed sunlight will fall this water will be taken up by the seeds that is sufficient amount of the water will be taken up by each one of them if you get manure then also they will get sufficient amount of manure okay between them and the plant which will grow okay the leaves will get enough space for spreading they will get enough space for spreading right in this way the yield will be more that is the output will be more yield will be more why the yield is more here because there is no competition among the seed but if you see this condition here the seeds are lying very close to each other now if you see they will not get the proper sunlight even why because see some of them are getting more some of them are getting very less if you are giving water then also water is coming only in this much of space so they all will fight they will fight for water right now they if they will start giving the leaves okay the seedlings will emerge what will happen see they will be not able to spread their leaves properly there will be overcrowding and there will be a fight for space so this will bring the overcrowding now if there is a overcrowding then even the healthy seeds will not give you good yield so there will be the yield will be low here in this case and as yield will be low because there is a high competition among the seeds okay there is a high competition among the seeds for space for sunlight for water and that is why the yield will be low and it will result in the wastage of money because farmer has spent a lot of amount of money in purchasing the good quality of the seeds and then even after putting so much money if the yield is less then the farmer will suffer losses obviously okay so today in our class i have explained you two important agricultural practices that is uh, the preparation of soil and sowing in our next session i will be explaining you further from this chapter thank you and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share among your friends and family bye bye